in this video we'll be talking about autism spectrum disorders this is going to be an overview in subsequent video we are going to talk about this disease in details so autism spectrum disorder is a neurodevelopmental disorder that affects the ability for social interaction communication and the social behavior so overall it's a neurodevelopmental disorder now autism results in range of phenotype and that is why it is known as spectrum so in one side of the autism spectrum there is high intelligence autism spectrum so these children have different kind of iqs they have very high uh, degree of interest in one particular topic or subject and they are highly good at it in the middle spectrum there is average intelligence where people struggle to thrive and struggle to do problem solving or they find it hard to interact socially and another spectrum is low intelligence which who, who find find it difficult to perform day to day task interact with people or make new friends so that is why autism spectrum disorder is a very broad category of uh, behavioral spectrum so there are different kind of behavior typical ones are avoidance of social interaction avoidance of eye contact especially unresponsiveness towards any kind of interaction let's say the child is totally ignorant about the interaction with the parents or they refuse to hug or interact with their parents hyperactivity is sometime a prevalent cue they could be intolerant to certain sounds or high sounds they could be very sensitive towards it they might have agitated mood sometimes other side of the spectrum shows highly depressed behaviors sleep related disorders repetitive behavior is very typical and in extreme cases there could be also epilepsy epilepsy associated with autism spectrum disorder now each of these phenotypes or uh, symptoms that we discussed right now cannot individually suggest that a child might be affected with autism so there are different criteria based on which autism spectrum disorders are defined so there is a criteria known as dsm5 manual which talks about the Uh, specific criteria of autism spectrum disorder so this diagnostic manual says that there is a persistent deficit in social communication and social interaction across multiple context that means there could be a deficit in social reciprocity simply saying that there are abnormal a uh, way of communicating with the world so basically let's say a child is playing all by herself or himself and not interacting with the friends let's say when basically a child find something new they always want to show it to other friends or their uh, family but in this case they'll show any lack of interest to initiate a back and forth conversation so this kind of failure of back and forth conversation is one of the hallmarks of social uh, deficit in social rep- reciprocity so and these autistic child do not want to share any of the f- tools or any of the toys that they found interesting so they have a lack of sharing interest which is not really true for a normal child okay there are also non verbal communicative behaviors which are used for social interaction generally a child would try to communicate with their parents or friend in a verbal manner even if the seg sentence is fragmented still they would try to uh, communicate in a verbal fashion but in autism spectrum it has been seen that sign languages are often used to communicate also one of the biggest uh, thing about communication is maintaining an eye con- contact in autism it has been seen that eye con- contact is kind generally avoided and there is also deficit in developing maintaining and understanding relationships that means okay this child doesn't have a healthy relationship with parents or even a friends even if they try to uh, play with the friends they often hurt or agitate the other friends so maintaining relationship or initiating relationship is also a difficulty with this kind of condition so all these thing falls under a um umbrella term of social communication deficit
Now there is also restricted repetitive patterns of behavior, interest and activities. This is another peculiar feature about autism. So there are stereotyped repetitive motor movements or some sort of like repetitive uh, speech terms can also be associated with autism. For example, a child is spinning a toy repeatedly without any uh, reason and this is happening very fruitfully and reliably all the time that child is playing with that specific toy. Or let's say a child really like to move their hand in a certain way and they are kind of like sticking to that behavioral pattern all the time. Some child like to spin and spin and this kind of repetitive patterns are very much associated with autism. Now it's also true that inflexible adherence to a routine or ritualistic pattern of a particular behavior is very typical to autistic child. Simply telling that a child like to play a drum and that particular child would play the drum in a specific time of the day in a specific corner of a room. So this kind of repetitive behavior would be done once and followed meticulously all the time. So this kind of thing is very typical to autistic child. And also they, they are highly restricted uh, <clears throat> and they have fixed their interest on a different type of a particular object they don't like to explore many things but they have their interest fixed towards a particular thing so overall they perceive the world in a different way compared to a normal child so sometimes they show hyper or hypoactive sensory uh, outcome I, I mean sensory uh, outcome so basically they might be agitated with a certain kind of sound certain kind of color or texture so these are all very typical to autism so already you can understand there are different different type of phenotypes which are associated with autism. Now in our human brain, there are specific neurons in the cortex which fires in a specific pattern. So neuronal circuitry operates in an asynchronous way. And this pattern way of fi firing is really important for encoding memory. And this is possible because in the circuitry there are inhibitory neurons and excitatory neurons. Always there is a balance between inhibitory and excitatory neurons. And this balance maintains a baseline firing activity in the neuronal circuit. Too low or too high activity is actually detrimental for brain function. And in autism it is often thought that this balanced activity of the brain is somehow abrogated. So there is an altered balance in the excitatory inhibitory ratio in the neuronal circuit. And this is kind of true for many other diseases like epilepsy where there is an excitatory overdrive. In autism it has been reported that the gabargic input which acts like a break on neuronal activity in a circuit is shown to be uh, low. So basically the excitatory overdrive is due to the low uh, inhibitory drive from the gabargic circuit. There are many other uh, reason and cellular molecular uh, basis of autism development. For example, these autism, autism spectrum patients show different mutations associated with different category of genes. And here is a laundry list of the mutations. Now the question is and what the scientists are now thinking about that, okay, if a patient has a mutation and have a behavioral outcome, how does these mutation kind of relate to these kind of behavioral outcome? What is going wrong in the brain? So that is why understanding the cellular and molecular correlates of autism is really important. And that is why scientists want to categorize these tools, try to make transgenic models out of it. So let us try to understand how scientists are trying to investigate autism. One of the ways is to generate transgenic mouse models. So these transgenic mouse models would be subjected to several behavioral test analysis. And sometimes these mouse models also show very much uh, autistic-like behaviors. Once those behavioral paradigms are established, then their brain is used to understand at a protein level or at a transcript level what has changed. So proteomic and transcriptomic analysis could be performed from these mutant brains. Also, functional assays like functional imaging, calcium imaging, electrophysiology, these can be performed to understand the circuit functionality in these autism spectrum mutant mice. 
So with two photon microscopy, it is possible to image behaving animals in real time. So scientists leverage these kind of tools to understand what goes wrong in the brain or in the brain circuitry of these uh, transgenic mice harboring autis autism associated mutations. And a lot of insight has come into the picture, especially with two photon microscopy, deep tissue imaging is possible. And that gives us a lot of insight. Alongside two photon microscopy, patch clamp recording can give us more idea about the overall uh, abnormalities of the neuronal circuitry. Parameters like capacitance, conductance, firing frequency, input resistance, firing pattern, all of these can be governed using electrophysiological technique. So using these techniques, scientists found out that there are specific mutations which are like Shang3, Syngap1, all of these are associated with the development of synapse and the dendritic spine. So once these proteins are mutated, there are alterations in terms of synapse formation or synaptic architecture. And that lead to the neurological complications in the autism. So obviously, autism is a neurodevelopmental disorder. All these abnormalities or differences that a scientist can possibly observe or anticipate in the later half of the life come occurs during the time when the brain was built or the brain was developing. But studying development of a human brain is not at all an easy task. Scientists use genetically modified mouse, monkeys, etc. to study this. Because often these models partially re recapitulate the human brain development. And human brain development is happening inside the mother's womb. So basically studying human brain development is literally impossible due to ethical and technical constraints. Now in the recent years, scientists uh, at Cambridge developed one technique known as cerebral organoids, which kind of recapitulate cellular and molecular basis of human brain development. Now using these as a model to study autism, scientists found out many, many new insights about the autism progression. So autistic patient with Shang3 mutations were used uh, in a study where their IPACs were converted into cerebral organoids. And once they in investigated the neurons that are generated out of these cerebral organoids, they found the soma size, neurite length, branch number, growth cone area, all of these parameters seems to be altered in these autistic patient derived organoids. That already gives us a clue that how these mutations can possibly affect the organoid development or the brain development in patients. Now, autism doesn't have a cure because sometimes the behavioral outcome is so diverse that uh, tailoring a customized program is so diffi difficult. But supportive programs are required to help autistic children. Now it's also a misnomer that these people are autistic. So it's always say it, it is always termed that we are a neurotypical person who behave normally or like others. And these child are actually neurodivergent people. So neurodivergent people have neurological structures and functions that can lead to differences in the way they perceive the world. They are not exactly abnormal. They are not stupid. They are just different. They perceive the world differently. Let me, exam let me give you some example. Let's say these pictures were shown to a child. So obviously a neurotypical child would broadly say these are all the images of a cat, right? But if this is basically shown to a neurodivergent person who might have an autism related mutation, he or she would basically categorize them as individual animal types. So the point is the same sort of like sensory input is processed in a different way in these children and studies are conducted on these aspects. So basically studies on neurotypical person where their faces, facial expressions and eye movements are tracked in that context, people found out when these neurotypical and neurodivergent population were asked to stare at a particular image, neurodivergent people tends to basically focus on the center of the image. So the top image 
is mislabeled but the top image is from a neurotypical person look this neurotypical person is focusing on different areas of the image especially on the facial features but look at the neurodivergent person they focus on exactly the center of the image instead of the facial features or any other features so nothing is wrong about both these cases it's just that the neurotypical person and neurodivergent person are perceiving the same thing in a different manner so that is all about autism i hope this was informative if you like this video give it a quick thumbs up don't forget to like share and subscribe see you in next video